weddings, you will miss birthdays, and you will have to be okay with that. I remember my first airline job interview, they actually asked me that. They were like, are you okay with missing important life events? And my answer was, no, you are not the same. I am the road to your ocean. You come at me with emotion. My brain got you one precision. The sign to cause on. Why do you want to become an airline pilot? I'm very curious to know what you guys want out of the pilot life, what interests you. I'm very curious about that, so let me know in the comment section down below. What's up YouTube, it's your boy FlyGV and I am back with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about work-life balance as an airline pilot. I get a lot of DMs and comments on a day-to-day -day basis talking to me about whether or not they should become a pilot because they feel like they won't have time to build a family, to see their family enough, and just to like live their social life with their friends, etc, etc. For those of you who don't know me, I am FlyJV, an Airbus A321 First Officer. Make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe to your channel, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Let's get to it. The first thing I need to tell you guys is that I will be separating this video into four different categories. Work, hobbies, which will include actually hobbies, entertainment, social life, and dating. Now, the thing with work-life balance is that it is subjective to every person. For you, it might be normal to have a work that dominates your life in general. For certain people, it might have to be 50-50, and for certain people, they feel like work is just a way to be able to enjoy your life more, so you can have 70% of life and 30% of work, for example, you know. So that brings us into the first category, work. As an airline pilot, the best way to make sure you're doing something that you will enjoy doing and that you will be able to cope with with the rest of your life when it comes to social life and family and things of that nature is do you have the passion for the job? If you have the passion to become an airline pilot, you've always wanted, for example, to fly certain planes, you maybe you're an av geek, you love certain types of planes, maybe you just like the, you just like the feeling of flying, maybe you like the views, maybe you just have something that makes you passionate about this job and makes you passionate enough to just you know, go above and beyond to be able to realize that dream and live that job. If you have that, you're already on the winning side. Now, the problem comes when you do this job because you want the lifestyle or you want the money, you want maybe, the, I don't know, the cars, or you want something that you think will be a reward from having this job. You don't actually enjoy the process of the job itself. And that's where the, the problems come in. Work is something that will obviously be part of your day-to-day -day life, especially weekends are excluded, but it will be part of your day-to-day -day life and you will have to accommodate the rest of your life to that work. So everything else that will revolve around your work, may it be hobbies, may it be sports, social life, and everything, will have to do so in a way where they don't penalize you and they don't clash with your work. It cannot be conflicting. It has to be something that just goes hand in hand and allows you to have a harmonious life that works with that work that you have. As an airline pilot, your schedule will be all over the place. It will be very unpredictable. During weekends, you might be flying. During the week, you might be resting. It's going to be very, very different. That, and that's gonna cause a lot of, you know, discrepancies with the people that you know and your entourage. And you have to be okay with that. The way you work at the very beginning of your career is going to set the precedent for the rest of your career. Somewhere where a lot of people talk and your reputation will be set in stone from the very beginning and the habits that you form early in your career. So it's important as an airline pilot to be somebody who understands the responsibilities of the job and enjoys the job to an extent where the responsibilities don't bother you. You just see them as something that you have to go through to be able to realize that passion that you have, which is being able to fly planes on a daily basis, travel, have amazing views, and you know, just serve the passengers that and trust their lives to you. At the end of the day, it's a job like any other. Every job has certain constraints. As an airline pilot, the constraints come with the fact that you will not be home all of the time. You will be tired a lot of the time. And sometimes when you don't want to work, you will have to work and you will have to take it upon yourself to just do it. Now let's move on to the hobbies part. And like I said, hobbies, it can be hobbies, entertainment, and sports. I just want to group all of these things together so I don't have a list of so many different things. So in life, we don't just live to work. We have other interests around work and we want to be able to just have a life where sometimes, you know, you just want to rest. Maybe you like video games, maybe you like to play tennis, maybe you like to lift weights, you know, maybe you like to, you know, watch Netflix. These are all parts of this hobby, entertainment, sports category. You need to have hobbies that you can implement them in your day-to-day -day life as a pilot 
without them impeding with, with your work and conflicting too much. Me, I like to lift weights, I like boxing, and I, I like doing things that require me to, you know, just exert my body. So, if I go to the gym, I'm exerting my body. I'm lifting weights, I might do some boxing, hit a bag or something like that. If I go to a hotel today for a flight, I know that I don't need necessarily to be in the gym. I can be in my hotel room, do some push-ups, do some squats, do some sit-ups, you know, do some planks. I can always adapt myself to the situation where my job has not become a detriment for the other things that I want to do around that job, right? The difficulties will come to you if you're somebody who has hobbies, entertainment, and you know, maybe for example a sport that conflicts completely with what you want to do as a career, which is be an airline pilot. If you have hobbies that require you to be home necessarily, that is going to conflict with your lifestyle because that hobby might not be compatible with that job of airline pilot and so maybe you might want to rethink whether or not you really want to become an airline pilot because you like it because people who tend to like aviation and want to become an airline pilot they, they will usually have hobbies that are oriented to that mindset already they'll already have hobbies that they can do on the go you know it will not bother them to like leave the country and be able to still do what they do on a day-to-day on a day -to -day basis right so think about it this way People who have the best work-life balance, people whose lives outside of work are in a way not too different from their lives at work. If you like playing video games, you can take your Xbox with you, for example, to the hotel and play video games. If you like going to the gym, if you like working out, you can implement calisthenics and bodyweight exercises so you can do it at the hotel. Now, let's move on to social life. As an airline pilot, especially, especially, especially in the beginning of your career, you will have to be okay with not getting what you want in terms of location and in terms of flight time because since you do not have a lot of experience you do not have a lot of choice okay you're not valuable enough to be able to impose things to roster you're not valuable enough where you can have that much free time because most likely if you're in the beginning of your career you're going to be single okay and you're going to have a lot of time on your hands to learn and to do flights so they're going to use you to the maximum and since you do not have that much experience, you will have applied to as many places as you can and you will go with the opportunities that you get, meaning you might go to a location that is not your first choice, but you will have to just adapt to it. You have to be somebody who is adaptable and who is okay with being alone. Being okay with being alone because you will move to a place where maybe you know no one, you will have to find a place by yourself, get furniture by yourself, you know, take care of yourself without having anybody around you and you have to be okay with that. Certain people are not okay with that and that is okay, you know, certain people are just not the type of people to be able to be alone, take care of themselves and that's fine, you know, some, some people are very outgoing, they really, they really like extrovert, they really like having people around them, that's fine as well and you can be that way and be an airline pilot but if, if it's something that you depend on, it's going to be difficult. So if you're okay with being alone, you're already solving that part of the equation. Secondly, you have to be okay as well with missing certain events. Because because of your unconventional schedule, you will miss uh, life events. You will there's some of your friends you won't be able to see them as much because they have a set regular schedule during the week and you don't. So you will miss a lot of social events. You will miss weddings. You will miss birthdays, and you will have to be okay with that. I remember my first airline job interview. They actually asked me that. They were like, "Are you okay with missing important life events?" And my answer was yes, because obviously I am, because I understand what the job requires me to do. Obviously there's things that you don't want to miss and so you will tell rostering in advance, well in advance, so that that event is for sure set in stone. But I'm talking about, you know, in daily life sometimes there's events that are just planned like that, boom, on the fly. You just won't be able to do it because you have a flight that day, maybe you get called, maybe you're on standby, you just can't do anything about it and that's the way it is. If you are okay with that, you're on the good side of the equation. If you're not, then that's when you might want to rethink whether that job is for you. You understand? Now, the problem with the social life and people who are not okay with these two things that I just said, which are being okay with being alone and being okay with missing certain events and not seeing your friends as much as possible. And let me tell you, certain relationships will suffer. Like as people, you know, there's people who we spend a certain amount of time in life with and then we just divert forever. And that just happens and as a pal that will happen to you a lot because you will have to form an inner circle of people who matter to you and who you can go to and rely on when need be and not everybody will be available for you all the time because you will not be available for a lot of people at certain times either so it's just 
it's just the way it is so if you are not okay with these two things that i just said one of two things is going to happen to you unfortunately you will either end up being lonely and maybe depressed or you will end up being somebody who's like very weak and codependent and let me explain what i mean by that if you're somebody who cannot be alone you can't you're not okay with that it, it does not sit well with you what's going to happen is you're going to spend a lot of time isolated and that's going to weigh on you and because it's going to weigh on you you're going to enter this state of kind of apathy and depression and like that you don't want something like that to happen like it's gonna it's gonna backfire on you at the end of the day so you have to understand yourself as a person and you also have to be resilient enough to be able to learn from this even if you're not okay with it to learn to become okay with it you know people become things you're not just born perfect you know we have to learn about these things and be okay with it and it makes them and it makes us grow as a person and the problem with a lot of people asking me these questions that i'm answering right now is you're projecting yourself too much too far in the future Anyway, let me come back to that and get to the second point that might happen to you if you're not okay with not being around your friends and your social circle is you will end up being somebody who's weak and by that I mean you'll become a codependent person who will always feel like you need to be close to other people just so you can feed that, you know, that need of wanting to be with other people. You will start making friends with people you have no reason to be friends with, you'll start, you'll start hanging out with people you have no business hanging out with just because you want to be around other people just because you want to have a group and that makes you very very weak because you start you know putting away your own values and morals just to be with a group of people that might not share your way of thinking might not share the way you see life and that just becomes odd because you become this kind of like shell of yourself where you act as something that you're not just to accommodate other people so you can feel good about the fact that you have a group that's weakness now let me get back to what I was saying before that a lot of people do not live in the present moment you think too much about the future if you enter the job of an airline pilot as a young person who's just started with no experience thinking about am I gonna be able to have a family in the future you're already setting yourself up for failure because you are way too far ahead and I want to, to quote something that one of my training captains told me once during my line training in my first airline. And I will never forget that because it was such an intelligent like remark that he made that is not only applicable in the cockpit but also in life. He said to me, Jason, one time we were having a flight and I was pilot monitoring. And pilot monitoring means I have to talk to ATC, you know, I have to arm certain things such as the speed brake. I have to know when to do these things as a reaction to what the PF, the pilot flying, does. And so since I was still learning the aircraft, I was still learning the SOPs, which stands for Standard Operating Procedures, I was always thinking, 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 thinking. And I was like, okay, okay, so right now I'm gonna set this frequency, I'm gonna turn this on, 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 arm, arm, arm. We start taxiing, as soon as we start taxiing, I'm gonna call ATC to ask them for that. Then I'm gonna stop here and then do this. And then the captain, he could see that I was thinking too much. He could see that I was in a process of like constant thinking. And I remember like these words, like it was yesterday. He said to me, Jason, the problem that you have right now that's causing you so much tension is that you're acting 10 steps ahead. I said, okay. And he said, you know what the problem is with acting 10 steps ahead? Is that the nine steps that are behind you, you won't get them correct because you're too focused on the 10th step. And since you're not gonna get these nine steps correct, that 10th step will never happen. And you will miss things that are very important to do right now be one step ahead he said because if you're one step ahead you're still ahead of the aircraft but you're still close enough where you have situational awareness of what's going on right now and you have to apply that in your life you need to focus on you right now what's your priority you want to further yourself in your career okay you want to become a pilot you want to become a captain in the future work on yourself now build those hours focus on every single flight that you make when you come back and you have a day off, enjoy that day off, enjoy that moment, explore, live your life. If you want to put yourself in a situation where you're already thinking about, oh, am I going to be able to see my friend, am I going to be, focus on you now. When the moment arises, you can make a decision and you can do what you need to do. But right now, you don't know what's going to happen. So stop thinking in hypotheticals and start thinking about what is in front of you. If you lay that one brick good, 
that second brick is gonna go correctly. If you're already thinking about the tenth brick that's up there, you're gonna botch the whole job and get there just to put that brick because you have it stuck inside of your head. Yeah, it's a balance. And you need to find that balance by living in the present moment and reacting to the things that are happening as they happen. When you can be proactive, be proactive. But being proactive does not mean be anxious about the future and always be thinking far ahead. You can't control your life by scrutiny. You have to be okay with not controlling things and take things as they come and strategize with what happens now for the future. That's the best way you can build, you can build something long term and long lasting. Last but not least, let's talk about dating. And the reason why I left that for the last is because I know that's what everybody wants to hear about. Okay, I get a lot of questions about that. Oh, Jason, do you think I'm going to be able to, you know, build a family and as a pilot, am I going to be able to, to see my, my wife and kids in the future and all of that? So as a pilot, like I said, you have a schedule that is very, very different from other people. You travel a lot. You're not at home a lot of times. Sometimes you're not going to be answering messages because you just want to sleep. You're going to be in the hotel. You're going to be completely lights out, just knocked out. Okay, passed out. You need to be with somebody who understands that. You need to be with somebody that works on their own things that have something going on in their lives and who's not all constantly going to be nagging you about the fact that you're not here, oh, you don't pay attention to this and that, oh, I need more of your presence. You need to be with somebody who shares that vision, that mindset, somebody who has something going on for them so that you doing your thing does not bother them. And that way you can respect each other's boundaries and lives and strive to become better together. Because what often happens is people get with people for the wrong reasons and they try to force it. The moment you try to force things to happen is the moment you're already doomed. Because you're setting yourself up for failure and you're building an attachment with something that cannot work for you anyway. So you're setting yourself up not only for failure but for a lot of pain. And by setting yourself up for pain, you're setting your career up for failure. You're self-sabotaging yourself because you're following things with your emotions instead of thinking rationally instead of thinking about yourself first and not yourself first in a selfish manner but yourself first in terms of your future and your, your future kids and your future family if you don't take care of yourself now you're not taking care of your future family that you want you know you have to be smart about it if you think about it in the now if you if you screen things and you actually process everything that's coming at you right now you will realize that the best way of doing it is by being present in the moment and me by no means am i perfect i'm not perfect at all i'm just aware of these things and by being aware i can catch myself before i slip and it's the same that it's the same thing that you need to do and these things that i'm telling you is just things that i observe from other people and from myself and with this especially if you're a future pal you haven't started yet this gives you an edge already for your life and for the future. So realize these things and let's just recap quickly together, right? When it comes to the work, you have to realize that the schedule is going to be very, you know, different, very inconsistent. You might fly five days in a row, seven days in a row sometimes, and you get, you have to be okay with the fact that, you know, you will not be here for certain social events and you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with the fact that the number of consistent friends that you will have will decrease but their quality might very well increase because you have, you'll have an inner circle now and you know who's really there for you. Because when you have a lot of free time, you can't really know who your real friends are. But when you start having less time, that's when you see who's really there for you from the beginning to the end. That's very important. And like I said, when it comes to you know building a family and dating and stuff like that, take it day by day. Do not force anything and make sure to be with somebody who shares your mindset and who understands where you're coming from as a person and who understands the way your career works to, to where they don't impede with your progress as an individual and as a professional. You understand what I'm saying? It's all about being proactive, being productive and making things that works for you in the long term for you and the partner that you're trying to have. Everything that you do now is for your kids and your future family that you keep talking and asking me about. So I hope that makes sense what I'm saying and I hope it was valuable and helpful to you. 
you know a lot of times i have like these 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 i a lot of times i have like very vivid pictures of what i'm trying to say but i try to say it verbally in a way where it makes sense to people so if you don't understand something that i'm trying to say to you please leave a comment down below so i can answer your questions and try to maybe shed more light about what i'm talking about let me know if you disagree with anything that i'm saying let me know if you agree with anything that i'm saying i don't know it all i'm just sharing my experience and i'm just sharing what i think is right and correct based on the things that i see you know we're young we're trying to build a career for ourselves and we're very different from people who are older and already have you know certain things going for them so it's important to make these decisions right now to be able to build that long-term future that we want and the only way you can build that long-term future is by focusing on the present it's not easy it's not easy for me it won't be easy for you but be aware of that to be able to catch yourself Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. It was your boy Fly JV. The sky is not the limit. The sky is home. Be limitless. Before we leave, let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite part of the video, what was your favorite point, and let me know if you agree with what I was saying. Without further ado, I'm out, boy. Fly JV out.